بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد قال الله عز وجل في كتابه العزيز وفرقانه الحميد بعد عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اجتنبوا كثيرا من الظن إن بعض ظن إثم ولا تجسسوا ولا يغتب بعضكم بعضا صدق الله العلي العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إياكم والظن فإن الظن أكذب الحديث أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Honorable brethren, respected sister in Islam One of the most remarkable traits of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was his wonderful ability to efficiently accommodate people of two completely opposite personalities under the same masjid roof. People like Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, who even before Islam came through and taught people morality, was one of the most noble and moral people ever. Rejected polytheism, never engaged in Bohemian behavior like the Arabs of the past would engage in and was just an honest and wonderful person even before Islam. The Prophet ﷺ had people like him and others like Uthman basically people of that category under his, under his roof and he had people who were so ignorant that they could come into a house of worship and urinate in the corner and think that was a good idea. People who were not necessarily ignorant, but rather evil. People whose evil propensities would sometimes culminate in them burying their own daughters alive. He had that to work with too. But the Prophet ﷺ, despite having people of two different or two opposite character uh, traits and personalities, managed to turn that entire fraternity of people into the galaxy of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum to an extent where Allah generically says about each and every single one of them radiallahu anhum wa radu'an Allah is happy with them and they are happy with Him. People who became, despite being once the scum of the earth, our guiding stars. People who once were so bad that no king wanted to rule over them to now people who everybody wanted to be under their rule and under their leadership. The Prophet ﷺ's efficiency was on account of his ability to see potential within people, to dig the gold out of the people. He himself says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Annasu Ma'adin. People are like mines, like the mines of gold and silver. Even if they don't look like they're valuable, even if they don't look like they're good people, if you keep digging, you will get gold out of every individual. People are generally good. On account of some evil traits, we love to perpetuate evil thoughts. We love to perpetuate evil assumptions about people. And that's going to be the focus of the talk today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about one problem in the Qur'an and that is backbiting. But even before that, He starts off with another problem which is the root cause of things like backbiting and slandering etc. Allah tells us, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, O you who believe, ijtanibu. Stay far away, kathiram min al from a great deal of assumption. Stop judging people. Stop con- coming to conclusions, jumping, jumping to conclusions about how people are. Work with them, it doesn't matter what they seem like they have to offer. Work with everybody. Stay away from assumption. Right? Like the, like, and, and subhanAllah, on account of I guess the immorality of our society in which we live, it's just become so fascinating to us when we hear something negative being said about somebody. Isn't that true? Like when something evil is said about somebody, we just become ecstatic. We're like, oh my God, something wonderful to talk about for the next couple of days. 
scandals and, and evil things coming, up, coming out about people, they excite us. Right? And not necessarily to eradicate the problem, to amuse us. We, we're amused by conversations where we just harbor evil assumptions about people. Sometimes those assumptions don't even have any basis, but just because someone said it, it was said, we just want, oh my, this is a juicy and a hot topic for us to discuss amongst our friends. Like the poet very profoundly says, if people or when people hear evil things about me, they become ecstatic. They become very excited. It tickles their fancy. And they love talking about it. But the moment they hear something good about somebody else, because that is happening to somebody else and not happening to me, they sweep it under the rug. They bury it. Good things about people we don't want to perpetuate. But the bad things that come out, before even confirming, we like to entertain them and subhanAllah start spreading them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that that's a problem. Just evil assumption in general is a problem. Muslims in general, believers in general, people in general are good. Assume the best of them. Even if that's what the case is is not alluding towards. Even if that is what reality is not pointing towards. Just assume it. It doesn't take a lot of proof to assume something good about someone. But to assume something evil, you know, like on account of this ayah, there's a very famous tafsir scholar of the past, Imam Zmakhshari, rahimullah. He categorizes this into, into two categories, into four actually, but we'll just mention two of them. One of them pertaining to thought about people. He says one of them is actually wajib. One of them is obligatory for you to have a thought about someone else. And what could this be? Having husnul dhan billah. Having good assumptions about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive me. Allah will overlook my sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deal with me in a good way. Having good assumptions about Allah. And muharram. Those assumptions which are haram, those assumptions which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to in this verse right here. And those are evil assumptions about Allah, that Allah will not deal with me in a good way. Basically, you're challenging the mercy of Allah at that point. And evil assumptions about people who are generally good. And to be fair and to be very blunt, I'm not talking about those people who are known to be causing problems in the community, right? Cancers to the community, people who have predatory behavior, people who engage in domestic violence, people who are just, you know, a cause of problem to society, a cause of a problem to society in general. I'm not talking about that. Those problems need to be dealt with head on. But I'm talking about, like Imam Zamakhshari rahimullah says, man dahrahu al that individual who is generally good, Something bad comes out about them, bury it. Don't talk about it. Just assume the best of that person. So be vigilant, but assume the best. Right? And that's what the Prophet ﷺ did. He personified that. The Prophet ﷺ preached that. And he implemented it in his own life. It was a very beautiful incident that comes to mind. Narrated by the slave of Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu, whose name was Aslam. Aslam says one time I was sitting down, Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu told me a little story. He said that كَانَ فِي عَهْدِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ رَجُلٌ إِسْمُهُ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ In the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there was a man by the name of Abdullah. And this man, كَانَ وَكَانَ يُلَقَّبُ حِمَارًا He had a nickname. His nickname was, those of us who were Arab probably understood it already. It was uh, Donkey, right? People used to call him a donkey for fun, right? Because he, he was just a very funny guy and he always liked, liked to make people laugh. Nothing was serious. And he said something nice about him too. He said, This man was, I mean, although he, he had his bad qualities, he used to make the Prophet laugh. He was a very good, um, I mean, source of happiness for the Prophet But this man had one bad quality. He used to, he was a drunk. 
He used to drink a lot. So one time, he was brought to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and obviously there's a, there's a there's a federal punishment. It's a federal offense to to drink in an Islamic government, right? So he was given the punishment. فَأُمِرَ بِهِ فَجُلِي that he he was the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam commanded for him to be given the punishment. And after he was given the punishment, during his sentencing or whatever, somebody commented, فَقَالَ رَجُلٌ مِنَ الْقَوْمِ One man from amongst the people who were sitting there said, اللَّهُمَّ الْعَنْهُ O oh Allah, curse this man. مَا أَكْثَرَ مَا يُؤْتَى بِهِ This man doesn't learn his lesson. Every other day he's being brought for the same crime and being punished for the same crime and he never ever learns his lesson. So Allah, curse him. So, the, I mean, he was angry. You know what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said? He said, La Don't curse him. Don't curse him. Why? He says, For Wallahi ma alimtu illa anhu yuhibbu Allah wa rasoola. How kama qala alayhi salatu wa salam. He took an oath by Allah. The Prophet says, Don't take an oath by Allah unless you really mean what you're saying. And he says, I take an oath by Allah that this man could be somebody who loves the Prophet and Allah himself. Right? Despite the fact that this man was a constant drunk, a, a person who drank and just subhanAllah became known with the nickname donkey. Somebody who nobody took serious. And the Prophet said, don't curse him because who knows who he is in the eyes of Allah. Have good assumptions about people. Good assumptions about people. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet was subhanAllah, the most compassionate teacher, the best teacher anybody can ever ask for. On one instant, the Prophet was sitting down and a man came to him, an Arabi, a Bedouin came to him. Bedouins are known for their very crude and harsh, very rugged manners. So he came to the Prophet and he asked him for something. The Prophet ﷺ gave him whatever it is he asked for. And after he gave it to him, the Prophet ﷺ, just to confirm, just, you know how they would say, after they already gave you whatever they sold you at the store, can I help you with anything else? So just like that, the Prophet ﷺ asked him in his own way, in their own metaphor, did I, did I do a good job? Meaning like, did you, are you happy with what you got? Right? Meaning, can I help you further? And that's, is that a question to be answered or is that rhetorical? It's rhetorical. Right? But this man was, I mean, Arabis, they don't think before they speak. Bedouins, people of the village, they just say whatever comes to their mind. So this man just went straight in and he said, La, no. No, I want more. He said, Ahanta, um, you were kind, wala ajmalta. But you didn't display kindness with beauty. Look, I mean, that's blasphemous. In the case of the Prophet you don't talk like that. He said, you were nice, but you weren't beautiful in the way you were nice. So hearing this, obviously the Sahaba radiallahu got infuriated. They got angry. And they were about to advance and... Who knows? Lord alone knows what they would have done to this man. But the Prophet ﷺ told them all, Kufu, stay back. Hold your horses. Let me deal with it. And the Prophet ﷺ took him to the corner and he asked him, What can I help you with? What more can I help you with? And the man told him and the Prophet ﷺ helped him. And then he asked him again, Ahsantu ilayk. Now are you happy? Now did I do a good job? So he said, Now, now, now you're... And then he said, Jazakallah, in such a kind way. He said, Jazakallah minni wa min ahlil ashira. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you on my behalf, on behalf of my whole family. So the Prophet ﷺ so softly and kindly and compassionately explained to him that, you know, my sahaba, my companions, they were infuriated because of the way you spoke. And they're not used to the, hearing that type of, of speech around me. I'm paraphrasing. These are not the exact words of the Prophet ﷺ, but this is what he told him, more or less. And he said, you know what? There's something in their hearts right now that, that has a little, that harbors a little neg negativity about you. So go, and whatever you just told me right now, say it in front of them, so that they get cleared up and they're put to ease. That you are a good man. They assume that you're a bad person, but that's not the case. So just whatever you did in front of me right now, do it in front of them so it clears it up.
to show that you're not a bad person. So he did that. And the Sahaba radiallahu anhu were baffled. Like, oh my God, we would have literally destroyed a man who was a good person but just didn't know how to act. And the Prophet sallallahu explained it in such beautiful words. He says, Inna mathali wa mathalu hadal arabi. Verily, the example of me and that Bedouin is like the example kamathali rajulin of a man kanat lahu naqatan sharadat alay. Right? Who had a camel and that camel strayed away from him. The camel left him. Right? So people started following the camel. People thought they were helping, so they started following the animal, started chasing after it. They didn't increase the animal in anything except for further rebellion. Animal kept running, running further. So the person who owned the camel called out to the, the people who were trying to chase after or trying to apprehend the animal. Leave me and my camel to be. Leave me and my camel. Why? Because for in me Because I am more kind, more understanding. If has an element of understanding leveled, I mean, uh, merged with compassion. I understand. I'm more compassionate towards my animal, and I alam and I know my animal better. So he goes after his animal. He gathers whatever edibles in terms of fodder that he can gather that the earth has to offer. He calls his animal with compassion, indicates towards it, and the camel comes rushing towards its owner. And it comes and it's it, it, it settles down. And the owner feeds it. And it's gentle toward it. He's gentle towards it. Pats it on the back. Then he puts the saddle back on the animal. Then he embarks on his animal. That's the example of what just occurred before you, except it was a person who didn't know what they were doing. Right? And he said, If I left you in such a scenario where he said what he said, قَدَلْتُمُ you would have you would have killed the poor man. Right? On account of blasphemy that he was displaying. Right? فَدَّخَلَ النَّارِ and, and because of the sin of blasphemy which he had no idea about, he would have entered the fire. And you would have gotten sin also for killing an innocent man who, had, who basically did nothing. So he would have to serve some time in Jahannam and so would you. Lose, lose. What I did, control myself, thought that this man still has some goodness inside of him despite the fact that he displayed nothing but rudeness and misbehavior and I harnessed that good win win that's how the, the Prophet ﷺ taught us may Allah make us all want to be like our beloved Prophet ﷺ. there is no man on earth who we should idolize no human being on this earth who we should idolize Besides our noble and beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you know the Sahaba radiyallahu anhum learned to identify that, which is why certain Sahaba, for example, the likes of Abu Dujana radiyallahu anhu, who is known, generally speaking, for his bravery and his courageous nature, Abu Dujana radiyallahu anhu was on his deathbed; he was on the verge of passing away, and his family and friends came to visit him on his deathbed. And they, they were very startled. They were really surprised to see his condition. Because generally speaking, what happens when somebody's dying? It's all like very dramatic, right? Like, oh, I'm, so, oh, I'm sorry. I, I meant to say this to you, and I didn't get a chance till today, and I love you, and this. And, but it made, people make it a very sad, emotional, dramatic scene, right? That's generally what happens when somebody's dying. Abu Dujan, radiallahu anhu, wanted to flip and reverse the norm. So he was laughing, he was smiling. So when people walked in, they're like, Mani wajhika yatahallalu. Right? What's wrong with your face? Why, why is it all radiant? Like you're dying, because like you got you gotta display some emotion right now. Abu Dujana radiallahu anhu said, the reason why I'm smiling right now is because I'm very comfortable with how I'm leaving. Obviously, I'm not I'm not saying I'm not afraid of my sins, but there are two things that I've done in my life 
that I'm really comfortable with, that I can meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with and say, Oh Allah, please overlook the rest. And they asked him, what are those two things that makes you so confident and happy at the time of dying? He said, <coughs> I never spoke about anything which wasn't my business. I minded my own business. Prophet ﷺ, like he says, مِنْ حُسْنِ إِسْلَامِ الْمَرْءِ تَرْكُهُ مَا The best personification of Islam a person can display through his, his actions or her actions is leaving that which doesn't concern them. So I did that. And what was the second thing? كَانَ قَلْبِي لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ سَلِيمًا My heart pertaining to the affairs of the believers, pertaining to believers in and of themselves, was clean. I never assumed anything evil about anybody. I never assumed anything evil about anybody. That's why I can go today and meet Allah with a smile. SubhanAllah, these were the people, these were our role models. Right? Even the ulama of the past. And this, this, when I was reading this this morning, uh, really brought tears to my eyes. This really great scholar of the past, his name was Imam Karhi, rahimahullah. Uh, this man was... He was a resident of Baghdad. So one day he decided to go take a walk in Baghdad, right, just on the streets of Baghdad. They were having this festival, carnival type thing, and everybody was running around and having fun. So he saw kids running around, dancing, music, and drinking, right? And this was very blasphemous, especially in a town like Baghdad, which was once the hub of Islamic knowledge. Right, so all around you is Qur'an, Sunnah, Hadith, this and that, and all things related to religion. In the middle of it all, you want to go ahead and start partying? You want to start drinking? You want to be that brazen? So subhanAllah, that was very, very blasphemous. At least, you know, the partying that takes place today is somewhat hidden behind closed doors in a club, uh, you know, underground or somewhere, right? In general, in, ty in those type of places, in places where religiosity is predominant, uh, you know, in their apparent structure. But in that time, despite religiosity being out in the open, these guys decided to go right in the midst of it and party. So that was very blasphemous. So those around Imam Karhi, meaning his students, Oh, oh our teacher, make dua against them. Make dua against them. These people are destroying the harmony of religiosity that we're currently enjoying. They're completely demolishing it. So make dua that Allah destroys them. So this man did make dua. He raised his hands, but the words that left this man's mouth were subhanAllah so beautiful. He says, Ilahi wa Sayyidi, O my Lord, O my Master, Kama afrahtahum fi dunya, like you made them happy in this world. Fa afrihum. Oh Allah, make them happy just like this in the hereafter. Wow, would any of us think of that? You know, people who are committing blasphemy and sin and disobeying Allah openly make dua to such an extent where, oh Allah, you made them happy in this world, make them happy like that in the hereafter too. So his students, they, not only were they startled, they were angry by this. They said, Ya Ustad, inna ma qulna uduru alayhim. All we said was make dua against them. Wada'uta lahum. We never told you to make dua for them. What's wrong with you? These people are now going to perpetuate their sin on account of what you just did. So Imam Karhi rahimahullah said to them, very, again, very profoundly, he said that what I meant by make them happy in the hereafter was... Oh Allah, make, make them or give them the ability to repent in this world. And on account of that, they will be here happy in the hereafter too. And he says, And their success, is that going to harm you? Them succeeding in this life and the next. Them being happiness. Them displaying happiness in this life and the next. Does that hurt you? Right? Uh, honestly speaking, that's, what, that's what's wrong with us today. When we see people succeed, when we see people happy, when we see people enjoying a little bit of our life, then we get jealous. And our ego is what makes us assume evil things. It's just the fact that why them and why not me? That's why anything scandalous ever comes about, about somebody who's absolutely noble, we like to perpetuate it. We like to harbor it. We like to let it corrode and fester in our hearts. That shouldn't be the case. 
Right? Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah says so beautifully about his teacher Ibn Taymiyyah. He says, I wish Imam uh, uh, Shaykh al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah was so kind to his adversaries. He said, I wish I was as kind to my homies, to my friends, like how he is kind to his enemies. He makes dua for his enemies. And the Prophet ﷺ made dua for his enemies. People pelted the Prophet ﷺ three miles straight. And what does he say? He makes dua. Yes, indeed, he raises his hands and makes dua. But what does he say? He says, Allahumma inni ashku du'fa quwwati. Oh Allah, I complain about the weakness of my, myself. Wa qillata hilati. I didn't prepare properly. And those same people whom, in whom the Prophet ﷺ saw good would listen to these stories today and cry and said that, say that if the Prophet ﷺ hadn't made this dua, hadn't seen any good in us and thought that we were all evil and made dua against us, we wouldn't be sitting here today. Ta'if would have been crushed between these two mountains today. When you see something evil about somebody, keep it to yourself. Keep it to yourself. Make excuses for that person. Imam Abu Al-Qilab, Rahimullah, Abdullah Al-Jimri, radiallahu anhu, he says so beautifully. He says, إِذَا سَمِعْتَ عَنْ أَخِيكَ شَيْئًا تَكْرَهُ فَالْتَمِسْ لَهُ الْعُذْرِ When you hear something that you don't like about your friend, about your buddy, or about just anybody in general, فَالْتَمِسْ لَهُ الْعُذْرِ Then concoct an excuse. Fabricate an excuse about them. Some ulama would say, think of 70 excuses as to how they could have been in the wrong, uh, I mean in the right, and your assumption is in the wrong. Think of it like that. فَإِن لَمْ تَجِدْ If you get to 70 excuses and you can't find any excuse to justify what they just did, then قُلْ لِنَفْسِكْ قُلْ فِي نَفْسِكْ Say to yourself, لَعَلَّ لِأَخِي عُذْرًا لَا أَعْلَمُهُ Maybe my brother, maybe my sister, maybe my fellow human being has some excuse that I don't know about. And I'm going to close off with this Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah. Allah blessed this man. Beautiful poem. He says, Muhammad bin Idris rahimahullah says, لِسَانُكَ لَا تَذْكُرْ بِهِ عَوْرَاتَ مْرِئٍ That your tongue that you have, don't use it to discuss the defects of other people. فَكُلُّكَ عَوْرَاتُ وَلِلنَّاسِ أَلْسُنُ Because you, from head to toe, are a personification of defect. And people also have tongues. People also have tongues. وَعَيْنُكَ إِنْ أَبْدَتْ إِلَيْكَ شَيْئًا And if your eyes, with your eyes, if they make evident to you, if they expose to you some evil and some defect about somebody else, فَقُلْ يَا عَيْنْ إِنَّ لِلنَّاسِ أَعْيُنُ فَصُنْهَا وَقُلْ يَا عَيْنْ إِنَّ لِلنَّاسِ أَعْيُنُ Then save it. Don't expose it. And tell your eye, Oh my eye, other people also have eyes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me and all of us the ability to assume nothing but good about people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us all to become manifestations of or even of, of, of a fraction of what the Prophet wasallam was in terms of beauty and noble character. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to use these noble qualities to progress as a community. We will never progress as a community if we keep beating each other down, if we don't cover for each other. I'm not saying all of us are perfect. All of us have sins. All of us are filled with mistakes, head to toe. But if we don't cover for each other, we don't try to help each other by not exposing one another, we'll never progress as a community. We'll never progress as a community. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from the ego and evil of ourselves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to de de develop positivity and good thought about everybody. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala